All right, so uh, ImageJet topic today. Let's get going. So today's agenda, we're going to cover what is ImageJet, the active ingredient of metacloprid, the product's efficacy, its mode of action, common ImageJet applications, as well as application timing based on tree type, and that's kind of how long you should expect to to be at a tree on a good uptake rate day. Um, cost of application, that's your cost, so how much it's coming out of your pocket to do this, not what you charge the customer, uh, plus the label and information on the SDS sheet. So what is ImageJet? Uh, general overview, it's a broad spectrum injectable insecticide. This is targeting uh, piercing and sucking insects it does work on some tissue chewers, uh, but mainly the targets for this product are piercing and sucking insects. Its active ingredient is imidacloprid, which is neonicotinoid. Uh, it has a low viscosity, which means it's very miscible in the tree and moves around pretty easily. Uh, so not a lot of issue getting into the leaf tissue. Uh, it's, it's a smaller molecule, so it moves around better uh, than most. Its mode of action is a nerve receptor stimulator, so it excites nicotinergic receptors. The body becomes overstimulated, uh, which burns up all its energy, uh, causing the insect to burn, its, burn all its energy out and, and expire. Uh, you want to apply this when the tree is actively respiring. This is not a product that you can put in in the dead of winter when the tree is not respiring and moving throughout the uh, moving uh, liquids and stuff throughout its tissues. This needs to get put in while it's actively respiring so that it moves around almost immediately. It's best used proactively. Uh, up to You can see up to 18 months of residual um, on a couple different insects like hemlock willia delgid. You'll actually see close to three years of coverage, maybe more like four or five, depending on your location and how slow growth, how slow the tree grows, and its needle turnover. Um, but the label will state uh, it's a one season application. So majoritively, you're going to be if you use this product, you're going to need to do it every year. And uh, for the first out of many, many times covering this, do not mix this product with water. Imagette and water do not play well together. So looking at efficacy on this graph, the left-hand graph, you'll look at percent of hemlock willy adelgid control. Uh, ImageJet was originally developed for the control of hemlock willy adelgid and hemlock trees in the Northeast. Uh, this is pretty much how ArborJet got its start. So you'll see the, uh, the Y column, the, the height represents the percent mortality of HWA over the three-year control. Uh, as well as versus the control in green. So ImageJet is the orange column. You're looking at 90% control in year one, 99 and 99 in year two and three, where the control, the untreated trees, um, 50, looks like 50% mortality in, uh, in the first year, dropped all the way down to uh, 20%, so there must have been a harsh winter and other environmental factors that played into the, um, that actually allowed for greater development. And then between year two and three, there must have been some type of weather pattern that uh, caused uh, a little bit more mortality over overwintering. Uh, we also did a study uh, comparing the result, uh, looking at the results of uh, ImageJet on emerald ash borer. This is not the preferred product for EAB. That is triage and triage G4. Uh, ImageJet, even though it, it costs less uh, per bottle, you end up having to do the application every year. So over a two-year period, you're looking at uh, almost 50% uh, more cost if you, if you chose ImageJet over triage or G4. You can see it is still quite effective. Uh, if you live north of the border, this would be the product to use. Uh, Canada does not have 
triage or triage G4 or MMEC and benzoate, they're active ingredient, registered in general. So you can't get triage over the, uh, north of the border, so you would end up using Imaget Canada. So why formulation matters? What's the difference between the 5%, the 10%, and a 20% solution? Why are you not supposed to mix Imaget with water? So looking at uh, efficacy, efficacy is a function of the percent of active ingredient in the target tissue. So we have 5% mix of, mix of water, 10% mix with water, and 20% mix of water. So, you know, a 1 in 20, a 1 in 10, and a 1 to 5 mix with water, where you can see that at 5% solution, so one part water to 20 part Imaget, it's still pretty liquidy. It's moving around. It's not solidifying. You add another another 5% of water to that solution, so now you're at one part water to 10% or one part water to 10 part Imaget. Now you're looking at uh, it's starting to gel up. There's still some liquid, but it's starting to get a little harder. It's even changed color. And then at one part water, uh, one part imaget to, no, one part water to five part imaget, so 20% uh, solution of, 20% uh, of that being water, now it's completely solidified. Um, so the tree, inside the tree, it's more like that 5% solution because of all the other solutes that are in the water that it's moving around, like your nutrients, uh, sugars that are getting taken from the root to move up up to the up to the leaf tissue. So this is why you're not supposed to mix Imaget with water. Uh, Imaget does have, or we do have a 10% solution, so that's twice as much uh, metacloprid in the same in the same volume. So it's 10% in metacloprid versus 5% in a regular. But that makes it a lot thicker, so it gums up with water a lot faster. Uh, the other reason it's uh, the other reason we don't really promote it is that it's a because it's thicker it has a hard more uh, harder time getting into leaf and needle tissue so it's tougher to get to those piercing and sucking insects uh, but if you were to be doing a big treatment out in the woods if you were working with a forestry department and you had to hike in a couple miles before you got to where you were making your treatment then you'd want to think about moving to the 10% because now you're carrying half the volume, so you're hiking in with half the, half the amount of weight that you would be if you were using 5%. That's the, the image at 10's major goal is to cut down on, on the weight that you're carrying to get to a, a far-off injection site. So mode of action. How does the midacloprid actually work? So, again, it's a nerve receptor stimulant. It excites your nicotinergic receptors in the insects. Uh, so basically, they, when they um, eat the, or consume that imidacloprid, it takes the nerve receptors at your muscles, those nicotinergic receptors, and it starts making them fire constantly. And, and that firing constantly burns up all the insect's energy and then wastes them away. So how it works is you're going to inject or infuse your imagen into the tree. It gets injected. The imidacloprid excites those receptors, uh, and the insects lose their body function and then die because of all the excitement that's going on. Uh, they burn up all their energy. So common applications uh, in birch trees. This works for birch, uh, bronze birch borer or birch leaf miner. Uh, it does work for EAB, though, Triage and G4 are by far the better products for this for this insect. Uh, Two-line chestnut borer and gall wasps. Uh, hemlock woolly adelgid. This is definitely the best product for HWA for those of you that deal with it. Japanese beetle, fantastic product for Japanese beetle control. Uh, the one stipulation is that you need to do the injection after pollination season's done. So you're not to inject this until the tree is done flowering and giving off its pollen. By the time next year rolls around, all that product has been metabolized uh, in the linden trees, so then you can go back and inject after the next pollination season. 
uh, elm leaf beetle, pine bark adelgid, soft flies, uh, soft scale, aphids and maples, white fly and psyllids on ficus, uh, white fly on palms, uh, rugo spiraling white fly. Imaget is a fantastic product for it. It takes care of it for many, many years. Um, it's the original uh, infestation down in Florida happened in the mid to late to 2000, somewhere around 29 to 2013. Uh, and then Imaget got down there and treatment, and now they're just starting to see a resurgence in, in the insects. Up until last year, no one had seen white fly again. So it either finally got uh, through all its life cycles to, to clear out all the Imaget, or it, got, it finally got brought in from somewhere else. Um, uh, for soft scales, this product is great, uh, but if you are dealing with a hard or armored scale, Imaget's not going to do you any good. So if you have an armored or hard scale, uh, don't waste your money or time injecting Imaget. So looking at a cost of application, and this is calculating your cost per inch DBH. So remember, your cost, not what you would charge the, the client. Um, what you can do is take these numbers and then add in uh, whatever you need to to make sure you're covering your, your the salary that you're paying, your employee, insurance, gas, transportation, your vehicle, all the other um, costs that you have. So a liter of Imaget is $299. Uh, you're looking at 1,000 milliliters in a liter, so you're looking at about 30 cents per mil. The low rate for Imaget is 2 to 4 milliliters per inch DVH, the high rate is four to eight. So to find your cost per inch diameter, you take your rate, multiply it by 30 cents, and that's gonna give you your DVH, uh, your DVH cost. So at the two mil rate, you're looking at 60 cents, three inches, 90 cents, four inches, $1.20, all the way up to eight inches, it's $2.40, your cost per inch. And then simply take your diameter and multiply it by whatever your rate cost is, and that's what your cost for that, that tree or palm is going to be. So, you know, that five in, uh, a five mil rate on a 30 inch hemlock is going to be $45. That's your cost. That's how much product you're going to use for that. Most of the time, this will, the slightly rounding up will include, uh, will also account for how much you're paying in plugs. Uh, plugs are 50 cents each when it breaks down. So, uh, you know, just uh, just another heads up to the cost. So, you know, you're looking at $45 in product uh, and $7.50 in plugs. So, you know, your cost for that whole tree is going to be $52.50. Uh, from there, just build up to account for all your costs like insurance, travel, gas, salary, you name it, you name your other costs make sure you add that in there to work at it, to work it out. Uh, application times by tree. Uh, first, we're going to look at uh, ring pores versus diffuse pores versus tracheids and how long you would be spending actually physically injecting the tree after setting up your plug on a decent to good uptake day. So remember from physiology class, vessel systems are faster than tracheids because they have much larger areas that they cover. So ring pores are obviously going to be the fastest because those are the big tubes, like your McDonald's size straw, uh, pulling in that, making room for those milkshakes. So trees like white ash, chestnut, elm, hickory, oak, uh, with ring pores, you're looking at five to 10 minutes to inject, you know, your 15, 16 inch tree. Uh, so about an average size diameter, uh, even maybe a 20 inch tree that fast. Uh, because of the nature of the ring porous vessel size, that first five is going to go in no problem. That second five shouldn't be a problem either. When it comes to a diffuse porous like green ash, beech birch, dogwood, linden, poplar, you know, you're looking at a slightly smaller straw, more of a, a normal size straw that you find at the, you know, the grocery store. Uh, so looking at a little bit, uh, just about double, 10, 15 minutes on a good uptake day. And then finally, your tracheid system, 
uh, trachea, you know, like trying to drink a milkshake through a coffee stir, a lot of work. So that's definitely double even the diffuse pores. 20 to 30 minutes on a, on a good uptake day, uh, looking at cedar firs, hemlocks. Um, for example, I went and took care of my parents' hemlock tree uh, last, last, ja uh, last June. Went over there. Uh, their tree is about 35 inches in diameter. It's been there my whole life plus. And that took me about 45 minutes to inject doing uh, 13 injection sites. 13, yeah, 13 injection sites, so it must have been a three-foot diameter tree. Uh, and putting in the, the four mil rate, so eight milliliters per injection site, it took me about 45 minutes. Um, so again, you know, a decent amount of length would have cost me uh, the 36-inch tree. So you're looking at uh, about forty-two dollars. Probably would have charged the normal customer if I was actually out doing this as a job, um, charging somewhere around four hundred fifty to five hundred dollars for that tree. Granted, this is the Northeast, and people, uh, you know, cost of living is a little higher up here, so you can get away with charging more money. Um, again, what you charge really depends on where you're located. Uh, Midwest, everything, you know, everything, all these charges get based, you know, your charges to them get based on cost of living. Uh, so the farther middle you go where your cost of living is lower, obviously your costs are going to be less too. So time of year to apply, uh, red means no go, absolutely uh, no shot of, or no reason to try to do this injection. Um, these will vary based on your geographical region, also temperature and wet season. Uh, so uh, blue being weak, darker green being okay, pretty good to inject there. Uh, and then May and June being your best months for the majority of the country, you know, uh, Midwest, Upper Midwest, Northern California, Northern being, you know, above LA. Uh, most of the Mid-Atlantic and New England. Uh, once you get down to down to Florida, Southern Texas, Southern California, you're going to be adjusting these these time periods. Uh, and also, uh, you know, because in in Southern Texas, you're looking at June, July, August being ridiculously too hot. And it's going to be really hard to get any product into the tree because the tree is going to be going into dormant um, going into um, a mode where it's protecting itself from wilting. So you might be looking more at um, March to April is good, and then September and October is a good time to get it in there. But you got to remember uh, using ImageJet, you got to wait until after flowering season. So looking at the label and safety data sheet, uh, typical things you see on the label are your percent active ingredient and percent inactive ingredient or other ingredients, it should always add up to 100%. You'll find signal words. Signal words are something that the EPA designates uh, after they do testing on their product uh, to pass EPA and get uh, EPA uh, registered. There are three levels. You get warning, caution, and danger. Warning being the, the lowest of the rankings. Uh, up to danger being the, the highest and obviously more dangerous. So signal word warning temporarily uh, typically means somewhere around, uh, you know, a three or four day recovery period without any type of medical attention or flushing. Um, so ImageJet would cause temporary eye injury, eye injury. It would cause some temporary eye irritation if you didn't do anything about it. If you got in your eye and just let it sit there, you didn't flush it, you didn't wash your face. Uh, typically what you do is if there is some type of incident uh, with your eyes, you want to rinse them for 10 to 15 minutes with clean water. Um, you'll also see precautionary statements. Uh, that's where the temporary eye injury comes into. Uh, first aid, um, if swallowed, in eyes, it continues on to the next section. 
uh, in eyes and if inhaled, skin or clothing, uh, and always what to do because of that. Uh, optimum results, you want to apply prior to infestation and or when insects are infesting and feeding upon the tree. And then again, do not mix ImageJet with water. So environmental hazards, that's another section you'll find on, on all our labels. Uh, for ImageJet, you're looking at do not apply directly to water, do not apply to pollen shedding or nectar producing plants visited by bees while in bloom because it is a neonicotinoid. So you do want to be careful when you're applying this product. Uh, there's, it's very hard for this product or any product that's injected to get into flower tissue and pollen, but rather be safe than sorry. Um, and then calculating application rate. Our, our labels go through calculating your rate. Also includes calculating your number of injection sites. So whether you DBH divided by three for uh, tree IV or F series, or DBH divided by two for the quick jet or quick jet air. It helps walk you through calculating your dose and your rate. Again, do not mix with water. That's right above the rate chart. And then your rate chart, applications for use in listed trees and ornamentals and forest and woodland areas. Um, and then in parentheses it reads, for bee pollinated trees make applications post bloom. So after the flowers have, have bloomed and fall off. So on rate charts you're going to see the crop or type of tree that, uh, type of tree and where the tree is uh, that you're going to target. And then a list of pests and then the dose based on those first two, uh, four, first two criteria. So again, low dose is two to four mils on ImageJet, and the high dose is four to eight. Uh, and that there are insects on both lists that allows you the flexibility of, you know, going at the high high rate if you have a really bad infestation on some of these insects that can be quite detrimental. And then the low rate for other insects that, you know, you're, if you're doing a, more of a preventative app rather than a curative app. There's always going to be a restriction section. Um, so Enajet is not food crop safe. So in the restriction section here, you find that this product is not to be used on trees that will produce food within the year following the treatment. Do not use on syrup producing sugar maples where sap is harvested. So uh, if you had a customer that had an apple or a pear or some type of citrus tree uh, or a sugar maple and they wanted, they needed an ImageJet treatment, that fruit needs to be tossed when harvested and the sugar maple should not be tapped that year. They got to wait until the following year. The information to pull off the FDF sheet, the important ones, again, it goes over eye irritation, so warning, caution, danger statements, uh, what the, what have, uh, you know, what to look for or what to expect if that incident happens. And then also it talks about LD50 numbers. That's where you find your lethal dosage 50. So what LD, LD stands for lethal dosage of 50%. Uh, what that number indicates is the milligrams per kilogram of your body weight. So milligrams of the active ingredient per kilogram of your body weight to give you a 50% chance of dying. Uh, the higher the number, the less toxic the product is to you, meaning you need to ingest more of that active ingredient per kilogram of your body weight to possibly reach that, that point. So Imaget, its LD50 number is 1,600. In comparison, aspirin, which many of us take for uh, pain relief, is 1,500. So that lower number actually means it's more toxic to your body. Um, and even for a more uh, a more disturbing number of caffeine is five. That means you only need five milligrams per kilogram body weight of caffeine 
to give yourself that 50% chance of, of falling over. Granted, there's so little caffeine in coffee, soda, Red Bull, whatever other drinks that uh, people consume out there that have caffeine in it. There's so little in each of those that it it would take an incredible amount of of coffee drinking to even come close to that five milligrams. Same thing with you know image. There's only five percent in a liter. Uh, so you know figuring out the milligrams per kilogram. That's you know you're getting at 1,600 milligrams of imidacloprid per kilogram of your body weight. So you know figure out how much you weigh in kilograms and multiply that by 1,600, and that's what you're looking at trying to get to um, to even have a chance. So um, I guess moral of the story is that insecticides, pesticides aren't as scary as people make them out to be. Uh, so that's the last slide for that.